Good morning. You're welcome to the showbiz segment right here on the AM show. Now, in this interview, let's watch uh, saxophonist uh, Sax Bossa talk about how he got into the business, you know, his profession, and also advising some musicians that sometimes they should perform for free and how lucrative is this profession. He shares more in this interview. This thing started long ago, and let me say, it's God-given talent. When I was a kid, if I always want to say this, I have to normally go, out, go to history. Uh, according to my mom, uh, when we go to church, or oh, like my great uh, uncle was also into music. So when they gave birth to me, anytime he comes home, he looks at me and says, you, you become a great musician. You play instrument, you play. And then they said, the man, Keep on saying it, just like that. I'll be there, then you'll just be saying it as if the man is prophesying to me. So, as young as I am, when we go to church, I always cry that I want to play the drum. And you know, gonna they use the big drum that they play, that big drum for, uh, as the school band. So my mom will say that, I don't play the small drum, but I want to play the big drum. Then they'll say, well, let him go and play. And when I go to, I play it. So it came naturally. They started from there, uh, from drums to keyboard, to bass guitar, then all of a sudden I just landed on the saxophone and I decided to remain on the saxophone because uh, it's an instrument that you don't see a lot of people playing. So when I started, uh, the kind of motivation that people were giving to me, young man, this is a good instrument, so you have to keep it up. So I needed to devote all my time into it. And apart from that, I went and also acquired knowledge from the University of Education Music at Winneba to also study music so that at least I'll have a certificate. And that's my profession. And I teach as well. I'm a music teacher. Okay. Is it lucrative? Do you get a lot of money from, from this? Hey, yes. Yes, and this question, I will tell you something. In fact, when I was growing up, I saw that music was not a good profession because the people I was playing with in church when I was young, my, my late father was a pastor. The instrumentalists will come back to the church, uh, to, to the mission house, mm -hmm. to demand for money. Then my dad would say, ah, but we just paid you poor last Sunday. And so pastor, scan and so on. Then so I saw that, no, I won't do music. So way back, people were telling my dad that your child, you are wasting his time. Send him to music school. I told my dad, I'll not do music as a profession. I'll do another thing and support it with music. Then it went on. I went to school, secondary school. Uh, where I went, there was no music teacher there. All of a sudden, they gave me that post as a, like, a music coordinator for culture festival. I was doing this. The most of the teachers would ask, what, what course are you doing? They said, I'm doing uh, block laying and concreting. That is BC construction. They said, you are wasting your time, gentlemen. Why won't you pursue music? I said, oh, no, I won't do music. They, I don't know what happened. When I completed school, I needed a job. So I went around looking for a teaching job, maybe to teach uh, pre-tech or drawing, then they said, no, the only job we have is music. That's okay, I play instrument, let me start. So when I started teaching the school, you see a parent will bring one, uh, his daughter, his son, then there is a church here, so we have heard of you, can you come and assist us? That's, ah, there's something about this. The one would I rather pursue this? That's where I landed myself uh, at Winneba. Okay. So if you're asking me, I get a lot of money from this. Mm -hmm. And music is life, music is what I do. What I, 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 I sleep with music, I eat music, I drink music. So with this, I get a lot of money from it. Yeah. So you get, you get a lot of gigs then because you're a conductor as well. Yes, yes, a lot of gigs. A lot, a lot. And let me say this as a testimony. I, 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 I am a music coordinator to some, of, some schools. So during the lockdown, I lost my mom. You have invested all your money doing funerals, and all of a sudden, I went and buried my mom. When I came back that 16th, that Sunday, and they told me, no school. So there was no school. There was no pay. So I told my wife, hey, things are going to be hard. But one way or the other, I was playing gig more than when it was normal time. 
my gig were more. I was playing gig on Monday, Tuesday, Friday, during the corona era. And that's where I saw the power of talent. I did not be the music talent. I, no, 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 because they were not paying us. So you're able to make more money during the pandemic. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I did. I did. And I said this just to glorify the name of God. Yes, I did. So we have a lot of musicians in the, in the creative arts space saying that music doesn't pay. All these big musicians, we see them, they do other things apart from music. What do you have to say to that? Is it, what do you think is the problem? Yeah, the problem, first of all, is the branding. Apart from branding, is the attitude, your character. Like, let me, let me say, I'm coming to Adu My Firm. They call me. I didn't do any bargaining. I need to come and rock shoulders with them. So perhaps you step in, they can open doors for you. But some people always put money in front. Just a musician, as soon as they, you call them, they tell you, oh, it's money. But this is my secret. When any minister calls me, what I do is I say, I'm at your service. How much is your charge? I say, say, whatever you want to give to me. And there they, they are so much that, when you say that, and let me tell you, I have a speaker I'm using. A lady just looked at me and said, you need a speaker. Gave me 6,000 to go and buy a speaker, which I'm using now. Why? Because when she asked me to come and perform, I said, mommy, I don't have equipment, but I need to go and find out the price of the equipment. Then I'll tell you, but I can't charge you. I've become part of your family. It's okay, get back to me. Then she called me and said, gentlemen, I want to buy you that speaker so that you, you don't rent. And that's what is happening. So it's the branding, your attitude. Your character. It's not every day, it's money. Sometimes you need to sacrifice, you need to pay your dues. That's what a lot of musicians don't know. You need to pay your dues. Sometimes you have to do free gig. I'm telling you, free gig. And it's open doors. So you said you have a worship, a worship song? Yeah, worship song. So I, I, sax in worship. So are you touring towards the gospel lane? Or you're doing, what kind of journal of music okay. are you doing? I do gospel, that is my core. Then I do social music. <laughs> Which one is social music? Social music. <laughs> can, we, can, can we open that chapter? <laughs> yeah, we have to open. Which one is social music? Is it a bit of high life, Afro beats? Okay. This is what I do. Now, I'm, in, uh, I'm into events. I, I, I'm, I call myself an event saxophonist. So now, when you call me for a program, sometimes I look at your music because of uh, my kind of uh, branding. So when you call me and you ask me to play a song, sometimes I can look at the lyrics. So if you ask me to play Jerusalem, I can play Jerusalem for you. I, I don't see it going against my music career. When you ask me to play maybe Say Cheese, I can play for you. Because the lyrics in it, uh, they are not profane. When you ask me to do other songs, sometimes I look at it. So that's why I say I do social music. I play lab music, I can play Keller's Whisper, I can play uh, John Legend, I can play Perfect, Hello. So people can see me in another style. Yes, so while I'm saying this, because there are parties that you see me at a point in time doing some love songs. There's a party you see me, you see me on church doing my gospel. So with worship and love songs, you're good. But with other songs that involve profane words no, and... I don't play. I don't play. I don't play. I don't play. I don't. So how do we know this? I had a program and told the person, no, the song you are giving to me, I can't play. And I don't mind if you go. What about you losing money? No, no, no. You see, there's something about me. You see, good name is better than riches. So what I do is that if you don't agree, then I would rather uh, introduce a different person to you. I've done that a couple of times. So when I tell them, I say, mommy or dad, I can't play this song, but uh, I, I will give you a friend who can play. Because your, for your branding is very important. Because in, in, in fact, what I'm doing, my main focus is the gospel aspect. So I can't go there, then the next thing I'm there, then you see me playing another profane song. No, 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 no. It's against, it, it's uh, uh, two different things. But normal music I'll play, I'll play for you. I have a secret, the way I learn. When you give me music to play, I don't just go about to play the music. I can just be walking about, just be playing the music. I soak the music. So those out there, this is a free tutorial. Mm -hmm. Yes, so when uh, I can't give you a music to learn, if you rush to learn the song, you can learn. Just let the music play. When you are going to the kitchen, let the music be playing. You are in your bathroom, let's be playing. You will soak the music. So as soon as you soak the music, when you take the instrument, it just, Come, you just flow. You don't struggle at all. Okay. When you were, when you were playing, I, I noticed the eye contact. Yeah. yeah. Is it very important when doing this? Yes. Yes, you need to communicate. You see, it's a showmanship. You need to attract the person. You need to let the person also feel the music. 
So look at the person. Yes, I do that a lot. Before we go, um, what do you have for people who have been following your works? It's a new year. They want to know what you have for them. A lot of people have been following you yeah. for a long time. What should we expect? Yes, I want to tell my fans out there that, in fact, I'm planning a lot of things for them. This year is going to be massive. It's going to be massive. It's going to be massive. Last year, I came out with two songs, which was Sax in Worship and Afro Sax Praise. Uh, I don't play sax alone, I sing. Yeah. So as part of my branding this year, I'm bringing a song out which they will see me singing. Mm. Apart from that, I want to host, I want to do a concert, a bigger concert. And let me use this to launch myself or to say something. I'm a guy who lives in Ashama. In fact, a lot of people don't know. So. Okay, so that was Sax Bossa talking to us about how he got into the music business. And he had some advice for, um, you know, his fellow uh, colleague musicians. And he was like, you don't always have to, you know, take money for your craft. Sometimes you need to do things for free. And that's all we have for the morning show. It's, it applies to other, you know, creatives as yes. well. I do MC stuff and you don't always take it. Yeah. But someday you'll get paid. But I think maybe I should change my, you know, <laughs> a saxophone something. In yeah. Cuba, I learned the guitar, but not so. <laughs> that's anyway, it's a wrap. <laughs>